Mathematical notation is a common language shared by all mathematicians. Mathematical inspiration, on the other hand, is a personal thing. I am very curious about everything. And so it's very important for me to know the truth about things. And so I have structured my life in order to, to find out the truth. I use martial arts to uh, uncover things about myself and what's going on inside of me, inside my head. In my mind, part of exploring is searching and uh, recording information. So photography records information. They're, they're sort of like a different type of truth, a different type of understanding that uh, I achieve there. Nate Dean uses martial arts and photography as a way of making sense of the information age. He also relies on the power of mathematics. Dean is a data miner who sifts through the information age clutter in a search for useful and meaningful patterns. We're certainly collecting more and storing more information. And I guess more and more now people have realized just how important this data can be. People store data in lots of places, uh, supermarkets, banks, uh, companies, uh, schools, uh, libraries, um, all kinds of industries sort of collect information about people or events. And in data mining, what we try to do is somehow extract essential details or information from that data. Today, data mining is used to look for patterns in the stock market. Data mining is used to find patterns in statistical data and satellite information. Much of Dean's work involves cellular telephone fraud. He develops mathematical tools that can be used to look for patterns in your phone bill. For example, your cellular phone bill clearly shows your calling pattern. Dean develops software that detects dramatic changes in that pattern. A dramatic change may indicate that someone has stolen your cellular code and is charging numbers to your account. To mine data, Dean relies on the mathematics of graph theory. The area that I, I specialize in is called graph theory, or the theory of graphs. Some people think of graphs as like the plots, the X, Y plots, where, where like statisticians plotting data. But this is, this is a different kind of graph. Dean can demonstrate the power of graph theory using any kind of data even common grocery store receipts. For example, a grocery store receipt lists items bought at the supermarket. And Dean enters each item into a computer. The items are represented by a dot called a node.
Next, Dean connects items that are bought at the same time by lines called edges. For example, one customer bought soap, dishwashing detergent, and a paper bag book. These purchases are connected by edges. In another example, these items were bought at the same time. And these two are connected by edges. Most of the buying patterns, however, are seen at the heart of the graph. To make sense of these tangled nodes and edges, Dean alters the graph to reveal those items purchased most frequently. This information would be valuable to any grocer because it begins to show not only what customers buy, but how they shop. For example, Dean has uncovered an interesting pattern. Bananas are linked to just about every item in the store. This might suggest to a grocer that he could display bananas throughout the store, not only in the produce section. There's certainly a lot of data mining going on now. And everybody is, seems to be jumping into it. Corporations everywhere seem to be jumping into data mining. It's a hot topic, definitely. We find that if we look at data the right way, then some patterns start to emerge. Maybe these patterns don't explain everything, but we start to understand a little bit maybe about why people are buying things the way they do, why they buy cars the way they do, or why they buy certain types of soup or certain kinds of toys and things like this. We start to understand things about human behavior and about ourselves. Mathematics can be a powerful tool and it can even be used to gauge what we think and feel as we all head into the information age.